Good morning and welcome to day one of Australian Beach Ultimate Championships. Coolangatta may not have delivered the weather we were after, but it is certainly delivering some high quality ultimate. I should initially apologise for our technical problems this morning on the stream. Uh, we've had generator issues, but we've overcome those now and we're ready for some excellent ultimate. I'm Max Denstrom. I'm joined in the commentary box uh, by Oakley. Thanks for joining me. No worries. Thanks for having me. Tell us a little bit about what we're seeing before us now. Uh, so right now we've got Frisbane in the red with extinction, what are they called? Extinct Magical Lyopleurodon. Sorry if I did not get that correct. Um, two middle of the pool teams. Uh, it's looking to be a cracker game though with the score looking relatively even thus far. Early on in this game, I think it's the uh, Frizz Bay Watch, the white team who have jumped out to the early leaders. They can't get in the way of that one as Godanzini reads that slightly better than his opponent and comes down to take it to 4 3. We've also asked to have a shout out from Angelina Ferrari to her American, uh, American friends watching from home for her. It's a lovely 20 degrees here on the Gold Coast uh, with just a slight breeze coming right to left on your screens. It's predicted to pick up through the course of the day up to about 20, 25 k's an hour. So it'll be a real test for these teams to see who can adapt the quickest as the conditions change from this morning into this afternoon. Uh, and then potentially even more so into tomorrow. It's a bit of rain in the forecast as well, which is always an added factor, adds that slipperiness aspect to catching the disc and throwing the disc. Uh, obviously in beach, the fields are smaller though, and that will assist uh, in that department. As extinct magical Lyopleurodons initiate their offense, moving it into the center of the field. They have Bow going deep, but they choose not to throw it. Choosing to have a number of players behind the disc, isolating one or two downfield. Feeling that in these tight confines of a beach field, that's what's best as they look deep. The throw a little short of the intended receiver. Uh, McNaught shorted that one slightly. Frisbee now taking their time just to walk towards the disc. Fair call though, the beat really ties your thighs out quickly. Disc is going to be picked up by Rowan Hess. Looks to get it off quickly, throws it up. He's got Maham chasing it, but it looks like the wind's just going to sail it straight out of bounds. It's going to be something to compete with today. That wind's definitely going to, definitely going to make teams work hard. Should also open up a number of different options uh, defensively. I'm sure we'll see a number of different zone looks, potentially some uh, creative match defenses as well, things like uh, poachers, brackets, etc. Um, but at least early in this game, both teams keeping it nice and vanilla as the, the Lyo Pluridons move it up the field. That's going to be a challenge for me. Ferrari now with about 10 metres to go out in front. Reaches for Bo, but a little too far. Seems as if both teams are having trouble just closing the deal here. Seem to be, I guess, forcing it too much into the end zone. Uh, Going to be picked up again by Rowan Hess, I think. Yes. Bringing it to the front of the end zone to begin the offense again for Frisbee. Finds on the far sideline to Dom Evans. Centers it back to Margie Dixon just downfield. She looks to get rid of it pretty quickly. Tries for a nice break, but just couldn't get it off. And Lyle Pluridon's look to move quickly as Ferrari moves it into the center. Uh, but it slows up now. And they find the shot through the middle, but... Frisbee gets a hand block in there. Picked up quickly by Hess and he jacks it. She gets underneath it. Natalie Taylor dishes it back to Hess. He's looking. He wants the score. 
Trying to find someone, trying to find someone. Stall counts pushing up now. Finds Margie Dixon for a dump. Back to Hess again. Back to Margie Dixon. Back to Hess again. Happy just dumping it backwards and forwards until an option opens up. Tries for, to find Maham. Oh, great layout. Oh. But just the fingertips getting to the disc. Not enough to get a full hand and a grab on it. Seen a contrast in styles here. Frisbee's opting for the 3-2 the Horo uh, with the Laya Pluridons uh, preferring the vertical offense. We'll see they initiate out of that same formation again as they go underneath to Zoe's. Zoe swings to the near sideline. Bo can't hold on to that one. Picked up by Hess again. Seems to be an anchor for the offense of the Frisbee right now. Taylor finds Evans on the far sideline. To Hess, just touching on the end zone. Looking for a dump. He's looking for a dump. Looking to get rid of that disc quickly. Finds Taylor for a reset. She's looking for options but can't find anything. Nice little hammer over to Hess again. And he's looking to the end zone. Wants to close it off now. And there are no options. And Evans... <laughs> just manages to get a little little disc right inside the end zone line there. Some heavy legs uh, out there, people showing their fatigue after a long point, running on sand and paying the price. It was definitely adamant there, wasn't it, Max? It really, really was. The pace of that final <laughs> cut was near a crawl, but it was effective, and that's all that they needed in the end. Uh, uh, credit yeah. to them for patience on that end zone line. It was, it was nice patient offense, which is what you need to see right now. Temptation is when running on sand, I find often. Teams like this, when they get fatigued, will just be to go for that one shot goal, push the, the long shot and the aggressive options. But the Frisbee showed their composure, waited till the easy option uh, with a little flip for the score in the end. And they used their dumps well, which was great to see. They didn't just force the options. And that levels the score at four apiece. So the Lyre Pluridons jumped out to the early lead and now Frisbees have brought it back. Game of runs so far. As Lyre Pluridons will have another opportunity on offense. Again, opting for the vertical stack. As they find Reinecker underneath. She doesn't like what she sees. Forced to make the difficult uh, dump past to Glover, but can't find its way into his hands. Going to be picked up by Tanya Dodgen. She looks to move it very quickly, finds Amy Lee in the centre of the field. She's pointing. She wants to throw it in that direction. She puts it up, puts it up. Oh, <laughs> that was a great grab as, as Yi Min Ho was falling over there. <laughs> great vision, great grab. The one-handed snag, reeling that one in. The Frisbee is absolutely ruthless at that point. Got the turn and immediately punched it in. Closed it quickly, they did. Lyra Pluridon's not getting multiple chances. I've been more clinical. Can't give the disc away that cheaply. Some great lockdown defense on the dump. Forced the difficult shot uh, to Glover to cause that turn in that point. It was a great mark there from Amy Lee. Really, really forced that inside option. Didn't give her anything back behind. She did really well on that mark there. By Pluridons, another O point. The wind has died down. We'll see whether they can take advantage of that. Hopefully this gives them, gives them the opportunity they need. Fielded in the centre. Moved to Reinecker. Finds its way to Stevenson. Handler's moving it quickly to Ferrari now. Ferrari. To Glover. Glover goes long. And despite the best bidding attempts of the defender, that's a goal for Laia Pluridons. Fully horizontal defence. Fully horizontal defence there. It was a great bid. Wasn't quite close enough. I think that was exactly what the Lyre Pluridons needed. 
to get themselves back in the game. Setting up the deep option from dynamic handler movement. Uh, playing to the, the fundamentals of good ultimate there. Moving it between the handlers until they're in power position with a nice option with separation going deep. And then execute on that option. We're playing with gender ratio rule A today. So we currently have three men on the field. Playing for t uh, swapping over after every two points between uh, three men and three women, which is awesome to see this tournament. Uh, both teams so far uh, making full taking full advantage of their entire roster. Uh, the fatigue of running on sand means that you really do have to rotate through your full team or you'll be paying the price pretty quickly as that pool goes well out the back. A few too many wheat bicks this morning. Yeah, I think. fair few too many wheat bicks this morning. Be taken from the brick mark, just 10 metres inside the end zone. Rowan has taking his time to slowly, slowly bring it up to the brick mark. We've got a bit of a 2-3 Horo here. Different look. Looking to isolate Lee in the centre of the field, probably. I could imagine so. Yep, she wants it. She wants it straight off the bat. She looks, she looks, she's got no option. She's pointing where she wants it. Finds Hess again on the dump. Hess is looking. Finds Taylor in the centre of the field. She wants to get rid of the disc pretty quickly. Finds Johnson, sideline. Lefty, Lefty Scuba over Woo! the top for a goal. Shorty Johnson finds Gondanzini for the goal. Audacious throw. Could not have picked that. <laughs> Absolute nonchalance. Disrespect. I love it. That's Look at the smile throw. on his face there, Max. He's pretty pleased with himself. You know you're at Beach Nationals when people are throwing lefty scubas into the, into the breeze without a care in the world. It was absolutely mint. That was impressive. That was very impressive. Well done, Frisbee. Now, live Pluridons have two options here. They can either say, we're going to raise to that level, we're going to start <laughs> taking some audacious shots, or try and be, you know, take the moral high ground, say, no, we don't want any of that rubbish in our game. We're going to play simple and clean. A number of the usual suspects out there on this live Pluridons line. Live Pluridon's definitely the smaller of the two rosters. We'll see whether that makes the difference down the back stretch of this game. Frisbee have really brought all the subs with them. They've just got a sea of red on the sideline here. Hopefully that should help them later on in the tournament when they begin to run out of legs. Disc goes up. Forehand pull, more accurate than the previous one. As Zoe's hits Glover underneath. Glover fakes the deep. And Bo goes deep. And that one regathered just inside the near sideline by Reinecker. Back to Zoes. Zoes looks deep. Hess underneath it. Plucks Hess it out nicely. Plucks it out. Frisbee's back on back on O. Dodgen. She looks for the big option. Can't find it. But finds Bonnet on the close sideline. She puts it up to Dixon. She's looking, she's looking, finds a nice dump in the centre of the field to Hess on the far sideline. And he just throws a little push pass into his, into his partner there in Tanya Dodgen. Little honey pass there. We've seen a lefty scuba and now we've seen a push pass for the goal. <laughs> Frisbees. Frisbees showing us, showing us everything in their repertoire there. The digging deep into the toolbox of unusual and interesting throws. Hess shows that he's got the fun stuff too. And just like that, Frisbees have gone from 4-2 down to 7-5 up. And they take half. Going on a 5-2 run. A little slow to start. Maybe still waking up this morning. Hadn't had the coffee kick in quite yet. But now, 
appears the teams are taking half time. 7 5. Controversial. When I say controversial, I should clarify it's actually uh, in the rules for this tournament that there is no half time, but of course, if the captains agree, they are welcome to uh, take a moment of reprise to to relax the legs, uh, take a breath, recalibrate, maybe talk tactics, maybe discuss what they're going to wear to the party tonight. I don't know. What have you got planned, Max? 90s theme. Oh, uh, look, I don't want to give away the big surprise, but <laughs> yeah, I'll be making one hell of an entrance. Don't you worry about that. I look forward to it. If you were the live Pluridons right now, Max, what would you be telling your team to try and uh, lift their spirits and get a couple more goals on the board? So far, the, the turns we've seen from them are mostly just from execution errors. Wayward throws as the wind picks up occasionally uh, or miscues, mistimings and simple drops. So really it's a focus question for me, for the Lyra Pluridons. They just need to go back to the kind of ultimate that got them out to that 4-2 lead, taking aggressive options when they're there uh, and generating out of generating those options from good handler movement initially. I think that's great advice. Thanks. <laughs> Thoughts for the Frisbees? Thoughts for the Frisbees. I, if I was uh, speaking with the Frisbees right now, I'd be telling them just to keep the foot down. They're obviously doing something right because they've come back uh, from being two down. So keep the foot down, keep playing with that intensity and moving the disc quickly because it means that their defense can't set. So apart from playing for the title of the Australian Beach Champion, the, the, one of the other more important competitions this weekend is best team name, of course. How do you think Frizz Baywatch and Extinct Magical Live Pluridons stack up? Um, I must admit, I think Frizz Baywatch is much easier to say. Um, so, in my preference, I definitely lean towards that one. <laughs> As a commentator, we favour the nice easy ones. Live Pluridons doesn't really roll doesn't, off the tongue. Just doesn't roll off the tongue just as nicely, does it? There are some other good contenders in the draw, uh, which over the course of the weekend, hopefully we'll get a few more of them on stream and we can discuss them as they come up. Frisbee disc was fielded by Taylor, centred. Now with Lai, he puts it up, tries to find Lee. The disc just had too much front edge on it and it just carried too much in the wind. It was a nice uh, option. Lee had generated a couple of steps separation. I think it was a good choice, but in the end, just not able to execute on it. And that's a difficult shot into a tight angle. Oh. And it's caught by the wind and forced out the far side. Lee tried to redeem that there with a, with a nice tough mark. Frisbee pick it up on the sideline, finds Taylor in the center of the field. She looks to hit the break side, but can't quite get there. Back on the far sideline with Chong. He Hammer. puts the hammer up. Oh, just misses Lee again. That's twice this point. That connection has almost but not quite come off. I'm hoping for it. I hope, I hope they can go third time to charm and get there. Shooter's got to shoot. They've been good options both times. As a coach, you say keep taking that option. <laughs> Credit to Frisbees, though. Their offense is looking very disciplined in that there's... One cutter out in the lane at a time. It's nice clean offense, which is great to see. Something that maybe the Lyre Pluridons uh, could benefit from. Because Frisbee Fris is quickly back on offense. Picks it off again. Now with Dylan Lai. Dumps to Taylor. She puts it up to Lai. Just overthrows him though. Frisbees can't seem to close the deal here. The Lyre Pluridons. Maybe it's third time lucky for them. The disc will be picked up by, by Webb. Very experienced player in and around Ultimate in his own right. This slight breeze that we've got shouldn't trouble him too much. He's repping the old Sand Sox there, Max. Yeah, interesting choice. Sand Sox, uh, obviously beneficial in both really hot conditions and some prefer them in the cooler conditions as well. And that's what we've definitely got here today. But Lai Pluridon's going to give another short field turn to the Frisbees. See if they can uh, capitalise on this one. So Taylor's bringing it in from the far sideline. 
She immediately dumps to Chong in the center of the field and he finds Hurry just on an easy open under. Frisbee's on their fourth shot of that, get the goal. Again, another lovely example from the Frisbees of clean offense. They had one cutter go up line onto the break side, leaving up a big open space on the open side and Ho said, I'll take that, thank you very much. They're doing, doing a very good job at giving uh, their one cutter the space not clogging the space, which can tend to happen on beach sometimes as people's legs get a, bit, get a bit tired during the longer points. And they're reaping the rewards of that discipline as they're now out to an 8-5 lead. Live Pluridons really struggling to convert as the Frisbees have kind of run themselves into this game. And maybe it's a case of the bigger roster uh, playing into that as well. Chong's going to be pulling there for the Frisbees. taking their time to get their defense sorted. Something that we often see at Beach Nationals are teams that don't have a long history together. They're often formed just for this tournament or shortly in the lead up. So questions of chemistry become incredibly important as Bo will take the brick. And I think we've seen here perhaps is the Lyre Pluridon's uh, communication and chemistry is not quite where the Frisbees is as we see their this time they go deep, Bo reaching, oh. slightly too far out in front for Stevenson to reel in. It was a lucky break there for Dom Emmons, his legs just weren't in that one I don't think. Frisbee, disc is going to be fielded by Ben Chong. And they're sticking with their, with their three-man Horro. Trying to, trying to isolate Evans there in the centre of the field. Going back to a vert stack. Evans puts it up. Lyo Pluridons managed to pick that one off though. And they get one. Their persistence and their determination is eventually rewarded. I think they heard me say mean things about them. <laughs> they heard me claim that maybe they didn't quite have the chemistry that they, they have after many years as a well-established club. And they punched that one in. Right the ship a little bit, stop the bleeding. Keep it within two. That's striking distance in this format. Very easy to get a couple of quick ones. Oh, Lyre Pluridons can definitely come back from this. They clean up their offense a bit more and really convert when they get those Ds. They could easily be back in, t in top of this game. So it could really go any which way at this point in time, I feel. It is worth noting we're rapidly approaching time cap. Uh, we do have, obviously, shorter games here at Beach Nationals. So not a lot of time left to go. Just a couple of minutes. But as I said, it's easy to get quick points when the fields are this small. At the end of the game, we add one to the highest score played at that. So, Lyre Pluridons could definitely still be in this. Big pull from Glover, but just bricks quite far outside the sideline there and will be fielded by Frisbees in Ben Chong. Sticking with that three-man horro, looking to isolate Sean Johnson in the center of the field. Beautiful break, but deed by Ferrari. Yeah, it was a nice around backhand, that no pivot backhand. Very classy as Webb picks it up about midfield. Fakes the forehand, looks back inside. Doesn't like what he's seeing downfield, not able to find a good option and dumps to Zoes. Oh, Ferrari in front of the bidding defender. Zoe's up line. Too far out in front. That's another one of those execution errors we've been talking As about. Frisbees. Bolts deep, trying to go give space for the long. Sean Johnson finds Gareth Taylor. He hasn't got many options. To an outstretched Beng Chong, but can't quite get there. Zoe's picking up, moving quickly to McNaught. He surveys the field, 
finds Bo underneath. Webb cutting across the front. On the near sideline now. About eight metres outside the end zone. Finds over the head of McNaught. Can it be cleaned up? Great oh. winning effort from Ferrari. Keeps it alive. Two metres to go. And we heard the who to go, so it's time cap now. If Fly Pluridons can put this one in, they'll be within one, and it'll be a game to nine. And it looks there's, like we've got a pick call. There's been a pick call. Uh, there's been a call of some kind. I don't really know. They used a hand signal, but I don't know which one it was. I think it might have been a foul. I think they used the old foul. Was it a pick? Offsetting foul, I think, was the call from the field. Uh, but we'll be resolved amicably. Zoes will bring the disc back in. She has Ferrari in the dump space. And McNaught at front of stack. It'll be one of those two, I imagine. There's McNaught. Fakes open side. Goes break. Zoes goes open side again. McNaught hits him on the chest. Glover apologies with the goal. That's 8-7, game to nine. It's been a game of momentum swings. Lyre Pluridons can definitely still win this game. They played some really clinical offense there. It was really good to see. So if they can get a good D now, they could bring this game back and take it to universe point. The early portion of this game was all live Pluridons. And then the Frisbees responded and went on a big run to take half. And then they got the first one out of half as well. But the live Pluridons may be back on the, on the up and up. And this may be the time for them to come back and record a historic victory. The wind's just picked up again, which could uh, could will definitely impact these last couple of points if it stays around. See what it does to this brick pool, uh, to this pool rather. <laughs> a little hasty there. Um, with that was the a little bit pool. hasty, yeah. Already assuming the worst. <laughs> no confidence <laughs> at all, and you predicted it well, Oakley. You know something that we don't. Does give the disc to Hess in the middle of the field. A dangerous throw. It has been all game. Frisbee sticking with what they know best, and that's that three-man Horro. Can't get it to who they're isolating, though, and he finds Lee from the far side. She fumbles, though. Simple drop. A costly error at a crucial point in the match. Can they capitalise? As McNaught reaching. Will he get it? No, he oh. won't. Anger. Despite his best efforts, two bids. Neither able to haul in that throw from McNaught. It's a good look though. That was a great look. The wind just really picked up that disc. So it's now back with Frisbee. Hess is bringing it in. Finds Bonnet in the center of the field. Chong's presenting options but can't quite get there. Hess gets himself free on the dump. He's looking for someone. Punts it to Lee Long. I think it's gone out the, the far sideline. The wind just getting underneath that one, pushing it out the side. But it does mean Lai Pluridons will have to take it the full field. We saw earlier Lee, very uncharacteristic, simple drop. But the Lai Pluridons give it back cheaply. This is going to be brought in by Nat Taylor on that far sideline about two thirds down the field. She finds Chong. He's looking. He can't find anyone. Far cross field to Bonaire. She puts it up. She puts it up. And Taylor sneaks in the back for the score. And that's the game. That's 9-7. Frizz Baywatch. Frizz Baywatch hold. And take the game over the extinct magical Liar Pluridons. They put up a good fight. But that middle section... Where the Frizz Baywatch went on a 5-2 run. Proved to be decisive and it was too little too late at the end there as they brought it within within striking distance. Lara Pluridons definitely played a good game. Just couldn't quite uh, couldn't quite put their offense together there whenever they were able to con and convert it into a goal, which I think just yeah, hurt them a lot more than what it needed to. And with that, we'll take a quick break. Do stick around. We've got a lot more high-octane, high-quality ultimate action coming to you from Coolangatta Beach at the Australian Beach Ultimate Championships. I've been Max Denstrom. I've been joined in the commentary box by Oakley Ryan. Yes.
Thanks for having me. Catch you next time. Alti.tv.